Hey everyone, Scott here, better known as Nerebo, and uh, <laughs> if you saw last week's video, you'll know I did a very difficult airline livery illustration, and today I'm doing one just as difficult. This is the Scoot livery on the A320, and even though it may look simple, I'm here to tell you <laughs> it's not. Anyway, uh, just to let you know, the template that I'm using is uh, one that I created. Uh, you can get this for free by going over to my website, norebo.com. Uh, link in the description below. You can get this template with about 130 other aircraft for free. And um, yeah, so that being said, let's just get into this. Uh, so I've already started, as you can see. <laughs> I am in Adobe Illustrator right now, trying to trace out the basic shape of this livery. Now, this is a photo that I just found on airliners.net. I believe it was airliners.net. Just, uh, you know, I just took any photo that I could find that had the best side-on profile, and this one looked pretty good. And I'm just using the, um, the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator to block out that shape. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, like this shape, for example, here, this little swoop, this wasn't so bad, but it was just that forward section that you saw me drawing there a minute ago. Um, it was hard to get that looking good and symmetrical and uh, looking right. The rear section here isn't so bad either. Um, yeah, just getting all these little graphics here. And what I'm planning on doing is just getting it all blocked out roughly. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it and then bring it back over into Photoshop like I, I normally do and then just go from there. I'm not gonna worry about colors and shading here in Illustrator because I do all of that work over in Photoshop. Now, this is where it gets really difficult. I was originally planning to somehow find the scoot font and then uh, do the arc or um, you know trace it along a path here in Adobe Illustrator. I knew it was going to be difficult, but the problem was is I couldn't find the exact scoot font. I think it's probably a custom font, which isn't surprising, which is something that most airlines do. And I realized that the fastest and best way for me to do this was to trace it. And this is where good reference material comes in. This photo that I'm using is fairly high resolution. It looks it looks good. You know, it's not really high resolution, but it was good enough to help me get these letters looking halfway decent. And for this particular livery, this was the bulk of the work right here. This tracing of this fly scoot text took approximately one hour, I believe. And it was it was migraine inducing, <laughs> so my my head was hurting after I got done with this. But I was happy with the results. I wasn't really sure how good it was going to look by tracing this, because not only is the text curved horizontally, the shape of the fuselage wraps that text around, so it's bending in multiple different directions at once, and then. I don't know. For on text, it looks really weird when you try to do that, and I, I wasn't really sure that it was going to give me the effect that I want. I wasn't sure if it was going to be cl as clean as I wanted. And uh, long story short, it wasn't that bad actually. And thinking back on it, I think one of the reasons why it didn't seem so bad, at least as I was reaching the end here, was that I was actually pretty happy with the results. You know, it's not perfect. Uh, it's like drawing human hands or a face. I mean, you're never going to get replicated exactly, but as long as you can get it close, you know, close enough is good enough. That's what I always say. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I say that a lot. <laughs> my my renderings and my illustrations aren't 100% perfect, but you know, all you got to be is close enough, and it looks convincing. And um, you know, there's no point in stressing out over absolute perfection unless you're doing professional work. <laughs> I, I guess, you know, I, I consider myself to be a professional, but when it comes to these airline liveries, close enough is good enough. And um, yeah, just making some final tweaks now, and I think I am just about done in Illustrator. Yep, I'm now taking my, my shapes, and I've brought them over top of my Airbus A320 template getting it all scaled and sized appropriately and just closing the ends there and making any final tweaks just to get it all cleaned up and looking good. So and again, you know, when you're working from a photo 
that has slightly different perspective of a complete side-on template, such as my templates are, you do have to make some tweaks, um, and it's just you know it's just all part of the process. And now I realize that I forgot to trim out the center sections of the the O's, and I'm doing that now. And a very simple process to do in Illustrator. Make the final text or some tweaks to that text. And I have just about got it. And now I am back in Adobe Photoshop, starting to paste this stuff in. And now the fun begins. You know, after all that work, that was probably that was easily over an hour of work trying to get all those vector shapes drawn so I could get to this point and um, yeah, now the fun begins. I can paste in those vector shapes directly into Photoshop and I'm using them as a mask. I'm not going to apply color to those shapes. I'm just going to get those shapes looking good in terms of placement and size and, and that sort of stuff. And then I'm just going to trace over them or I'm just gonna select them, use them as a mask and then add color over top. That way I'm not messing up my original source vector graphics. And then I can always make tweaks to the color layer as necessary without messing up my original source files. So it's just something that I've learned over the years. You know, after making tons of mistakes on, on my illustrations and my drawings, you just, you have to, you, you, you realize you're going to make mistakes and you, you realize that you need to protect yourself as you're going along so you can back up easily. And now, uh, here's where I make a big mistake. Or it wasn't really a mistake, but I found this Scoot logo on the internet. It was Vector. And I realized once I placed it on the aircraft that it was actually the wrong logo. So I think what I had is I had the previous Scoot logo, or maybe it's the newest. I'm not even sure. I don't even know if this livery that I'm drawing right now is the old livery or the new livery. That's how much I don't know about Scoot. But anyway, the logo that I had was wrong. And now I am back in Adobe Illustrator tracing more letters. I, I do not like tracing letters. I think the anxiety gets to me because I know that it's a lot of work and I could spend hours on this and the end result may not look good. I, I hate wasting time like that. I've wasted a lot of time in the past like that and uh, that's what gives me anxiety every time I go in and I, and I trace text like this. But... I knew it was the right thing to do to get this logo looking exactly right. And again, I forgot to cut out my center sections of the O's there. And now that I've got that taken care of, I can place it back onto the, onto the tail and get it positioned correctly. And what I don't realize yet is that I made the O's a little bit too thick. And I think this is where I realized that mistake and I have to go back in and, and cut those out. Yeah. So I have to go back in and open those, those O's up a little bit to get it more proportional and um, to match the thickness of the other letters. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And once I got that, then I can go back in and add the, um, the stroke or the outline to it, the black outline. And um, yeah, it's looking like a scoot livery now. Now the little, the, uh, <laughs> the little details, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. Um, got that text there. I'm not even sure that was the right font, but it was close enough. And it's such a small detail that no one's going to see it. And now I'm doing the, um, I guess the emergency exit tick marks that go around um, some of the exit windows. Uh, just a very simple shape that I put an outline around and then I just trimmed it out. And now I can just copy and paste that to the other exit windows. And now, yes, it is time for the registration. And long story short, I use Eurostyle for my uh, registration text on most of my aircraft. Uh, it, it's a common font that a lot of airlines use. I mean, it's not exactly Eurostyle, but Eurostyle is the one that I found that is the closest. If anyone knows what that font is, it's a common font that most every airline uses. It's a very, um, it's a very tall, thin font but it's very squared off, but with rounded corner, it's very hard to explain. But if anybody knows what that font is, please let me know because I've, I've been searching for years and I've never found it. But uh, Euro style is close enough. And now I am adding in the reflections. I created that vector shape like I always do to use as my guide. And then I just do the simple cut. The bottom section gets the gradient going downwards and then the top section gets that white gradient going up. And then I just added some final details. 
And I think I've just about got it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add some gloss to the vertical stabilizer there, like I always do. And is that it? Yeah, I think that is it. And again, with my templates, the PSD templates, it's easy for me to go in and turn things off like landing gears and uh, make make adjustments like that. So, so yeah, there's the livery. Oh, I need to change the registration because um, the aircraft registration that I was using before didn't actually have the winglets like that. So I changed it to a registration that actually had winglets, if that makes any sense. See, there's <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. And now, the other part that gives me anxiety is doing the background graphic. And this one actually, right from the beginning, seemed to be going pretty well. I liked how the, um, the tiger stripes of the scoot livery seemed to work pretty well as a container or a frame for these illustrations. Uh, the only thing I was really worried about was that it was a little bit too strong. And then as we get to the end here, you'll see that um, the final result was very strong. And what I'm doing here is I'm just creating different um, layers of these stripes, uh, playing with the blending modes in these layers here in Photoshop, and then adding color overlays and adjusting the blending modes on those. And the entire process takes, I don't know, this took about 30 minutes or so. And I just couldn't quite get the tone or the, the brightness of yellow that I wanted. I didn't want it to be muddy, but I didn't want it to be red, and it was difficult. Yellow is a tough color to make dark, but not muddy, so I don't normally do yellow as a background color for my aircraft illustrations. So I was fighting a little bit with this one, and you can see there on the right with all the layers that I was, <laughs> just <laughs> that mess of layers, just trying to find a combination of stuff that looked good. And then here, I stumbled across the idea of kind of breaking it up into two halves, just showing uh, the, the texture and then the, the tiger stripes at the top and then leaving the bottom fairly plain. Just leave it, just leave it open like that. It creates some nice asymmetry, which I really like. And yeah, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. And then once I adjust the, the shadows on the aircraft itself, just hacking here, <laughs> moving really fast, just hacking the shadows and getting some contrast between the aircraft and the background. And then you get that reflection of the aircraft in the bottom there just to give it some depth. Try to find some ways to bring some yellow back into that top section there. And uh, time for a drop shadow here, just cutting out a basic shape. And then just gonna blur that out. And it's not even an element you're gonna see anyway, but there you go, there you have it. That is the Scoot A320 livery illustration. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want my templates for 50% off the, the source files, the PSDs and vectors, uh, do check out the link in the description below. You can get 50% off of your entire order. So make sure you do that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.